Hey guys, Wes here. In today's episode of 5 Minute Fridays, we're gonna take a close look at JavaScript's reduce function, which will allow us to run a callback function against every element of an array and reduce that array to a single value of any type. So this is a really powerful function and it comes in handy in a lot of different situations. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I've got Vim open here, and I'll be working in a file called reduce.js that we'll use to examine the reduce function just by writing a few little scripts here. And I'm going to create a vertical split, and then over on the right, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file that we'll call eval. And we'll just use this as a sort of output buffer, um, and we'll run node to evaluate the scripts that we'll write in reduce.js over here. So I'll show you a little trick. Um, essentially, we're going to be in Vim. We're going to be running this command, node, and then reduce.js, and that will just run whatever is in reduce.js. Um, but we'd like to actually, instead of have that pop up in a console window, we just want the output here put into this current buffer. So I'm just going to remap my F5 key for that, and we're going to use the read command to read the output of this, um, which will be exclamation mark node to run node, and then we're just gonna run reduce.js in this directory. And then we're gonna carriage return so that we'll just execute this. Okay, so for instance, if I just console.log here, hello, and we have five in our other buffer, we'll get the output of that script running node here in this buffer. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and delete that for now. So we're going to be talking about the reduce method here. And so reduce is going to be used anytime we want to find like a cumulative value given some particular array of values. So what it's going to do is it's going to apply a function against each element in that array, as well as something called an accumulator. And the accumulator is really what makes reduce so useful. So let's go ahead and we'll create an array here so we have something to work with. And we'll just have an array of integers here, one, two, three, and four. So we can use reduce to apply some callback function against each element of this array, as well as um, that accumulator. Let's look at a few examples. The most common example you'll see when you are first using reduce is often to simply sum all the elements in an array. So let's just call reduce on my array here. And the parameters of reduce will be first some callback function and then second some optional initial value. So the callback function will take four arguments. Let's start off just by talking about the first two arguments. Uh, the first being the accumulator, which I'll abbreviate with ACC. And the next argument of the callback function will be the current value, which I'll just abbreviate with val here. So reduce is going to work from left to right on our array here, starting at one and moving all the way over to the last element in this array, which is four. And it's going to apply our callback function against each element as well as this accumulator. So let's go ahead and write that function here. If we simply just want to sum each of the elements in the array, and we assume that the starting value will be the first element in this array, then we have a really simple callback function here, which will just be the accumulator plus the current value. So it reduces working left to right, in a sense, sort of like iterating over the elements in this array. And each time this callback function is called, the result is sort of stored, if you will, in our accumulator. So what happens is if our accumulator starts at 1, then the first value will be 2. So we'll have 1 plus 2 is 3. So our accumulator value will then be 3. Then the current value will be 3. So we have 3 plus 3 is 6. So our accumulator value will then be 6. And then the current value will be 4, so 6 plus 4 is 10. And reduce will return the final result of the accumulator, which now will be 10. So let's go ahead and store the output here in a variable. We'll just call output. And then we'll console log output. OK, so if we run this, you can see that the output is indeed 10. It might also help if we console log both the values of the accumulator and the current value as reduce is getting called here. So I'm just going to wrap this in curly braces. 
and here we'll console log the accumulator and the current value. And when we log the output, we'll also just specify that it is the output. Okay. So we can kind of see what's happening now here. So we have the accumulator, which starts at the value one, where the current value is at index one, which is the value two here. And so one plus two is three, which becomes the value of our accumulator. And the next value in our reduction is three. So three plus the accumulator value of three is six. Likewise, six plus four will give us 10, and that's the end of our array. And so we get the output, which is 10. So we talked about two arguments getting passed to our callback function. There are two additional arguments, one being the current index that we're reducing on, and the fourth here being the actual array itself that we're reducing on. So if I wanted to also log the current index just so we could see that here, We'll go ahead and run this again. So you can see that as we reduce, we are actually initializing at index one and then moving all the way to index three, which is the final index of my array here. So the second argument of reduce is some initial value. We didn't use it here, but let's say for whatever reason, our initial value was 100. And so what's going to happen now is that because we supplied an initial value here, the reduce is actually going to start at index zero and reduce just as it had before. And so what we should see here is 110. So now you see the output is 110 because the initial value of our accumulator was specified as being 100. So that's pretty cool, and I guess if you wanted to see the fourth argument of the callback function, which is just the current array that we're reducing over, we can see that here as well. So you can see what's really cool about reduce, and what's so powerful about it, is that you can see with this combination of arguments in our callback function, we can create you know, incredibly complex functions over our arrays. Note also that we're not limited to returning an integer type here as an initial value. We can actually return any type here. And so let's say we wanted to look at an example where we wanted to simply flatten an array of arrays. Whereas the first example here, we were simply uh, summing the values of, of an array. So let's say that we have some variable my data and the way that this looks is we have some data structure that contains an array of arrays. Okay, I'm not sure what kind of data would take this structure, but let's just say this is what our array starts out like. So we have this sort of nested set of arrays. So let's say output now is my data. And again, we'll call reduce. Our callback function will again take an accumulator and current value as its arguments. We're going to do some stuff, but what we're going to start out with is an initial value for our accumulator of empty array. And so the function that we're going to return here will simply be calling concat on our accumulator for the current value. So we're going to be concatenating each of the arrays in my data to this empty array. And so that's going to have the effect of essentially flattening my data. So let's take a look at that. In fact, I'll just go ahead and comment out the work that we did first here. And now we'll console.log the output. And so there you go. You can see we have 865432 in a single array here, which is the result of calling our reduce function here on my data. Now, if you think about it, you can actually use reduce to write any sort of arbitrary function that you might need for an array. In fact, we could derive the map function and the filter function as well using reduce. It's just that map and filter are more concise ways of doing things than needing to write a reduce. But the nice thing about reduce 
is that we can in fact write any arbitrary function for an array of values. And so reduce is just particularly useful when we have some array of values and from that array we need to essentially reduce it to a single value of some type. There's one more kind of neat example here and we're probably going over the five minutes now. But we'll look at it just because it actually makes use of the other parameters in our callback function. And so let's look at if we wanted to get the average of elements in our array. So let's say that we have an array of maybe my transactions and we've got some numbers here. So 12.5, 3.84, and 2.97. So we can actually calculate the average of my transactions using reduce. So we'll say my transactions dot reduce. And this time we're actually going to use all four arguments in our callback function. So we'll be using our accumulator, the current value, the index, and the array itself. And what I'm going to do is actually make the right pane a little bit smaller so we can see everything on the left side. We won't worry about supplying an initial value here. Um, this will be very similar to when we were actually just adding all the elements of the array. We're just going to return a number. So what we can do is basically increment the accumulator by the current value. And since the average of any set is just the sum of that set divided by the number of elements in that set, we can write a little conditional here where we can say basically if we are at the last index of my transactions and inside of our callback here that we can just say if the index is equal to the array length minus one. So obviously in this case the length of the array is three so the last index is two. And what we can return is the accumulator divided by the array length. Otherwise, we return the accumulator. So you can kind of see, once again, what's happening here is we're going to be moving from left to right, adding each of the elements in this array. And if we've reached the end of the array, then we want to return the value of the accumulator divided by the number of elements in that array to give us the average. Okay. Oops, and I just have a quick typo here. And so there we go. So I hope this was helpful if this was the first time you've ever explored Reduce. Hopefully these were some useful examples. Also perhaps it was useful to see how you can uh, run JavaScript in Vim and basically just read the output to a new buffer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more 5-Minute Fridays as well as many more videos where I develop full projects from scratch. Be sure to leave any questions or comments below and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.